We've done it. This is it. This is our very last day of notes. <clears throat> and um, what we're going to need in order to do these notes is I need you to get out the periodic table that I gave you that doesn't have any names on it. And in the back, in the back of that periodic table, you will find the standard reduction potentials in aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius. And we are going to need this piece of paper, this table of constants for today to work the problem that we're going to do. All right, so let's uh, consider a galvanic cell. Consider a galvanic cell, okay, also known as a voltaic cell, based on the redox reaction. Aluminum ion plus magnesium reacts to give us aluminum metal plus magnesium ion. Okay, so give the balanced cell reaction and calculate the standard cell potential.
So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this thing by 3. And what are we going to multiply this one by? By 2. So for an overall balanced cell equation or uh, cell reaction, we will have on the left hand side of the arrow three magnesiums from up here plus two aluminum ions plus six electrons give us three magnesium ions plus six electrons plus two Aluminums. Okay, and what can I do with my electrons? Cancel them. So I end up having for my overall balanced cell equation, I'm just going to get rid of the electrons because they cancel out. I'm going to end up having. Okay, that is my balanced cell reaction. My balanced cell reaction. All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to find the standard cell potential. All right, so the question is, how much electromotive force? What's the voltage? What's the voltage that we can get out of this at standard state? Meaning that we have one molar of everything. Okay, one molar of everything. So one molar aluminum ion, one molar magnesium ion in our cells. Okay, so we're looking for the standard cell potential, and this is where we need to go to this paper right here. Now, if you look at this thing, you guys, they're all written as reduction potentials, but one of these is an oxidation half reaction. They're both not reduction half reactions, but they're always written. It's a standard table of reduction. Okay, so... Uh, this first one, magnesium, going to magnesium ion, that is actually an oxidation reaction, right? And so what we need to do is we need to find the opposite of this thing. We need to find magnesium ion gaining two electrons, giving us magnesium metal, because that's the only way it's given here. And there it is, you guys. It on The reduction potential for this thing is negative 2.37 but it's the oxidation half reaction for this cell so that means that for the oxidation one you guys we have to reverse the sign of what we get on this paper because this is for the reduction of it and it's being oxidized in this particular scenario so what I'm going to do then is that I'm just going to erase the negative, right? I'm going to use the opposite of it. All right, let's look for aluminum. Negative 1.66. Am I going to reverse the sign of that? No, because it is actually being reduced in this galvanic cell reaction. And so I use the number directly off of the 
the table. And then what I do is I just add them up. And if I add them up, I'm going to end up getting 0.71, 7 minus 6 is 1, 7. So 0 0.71, and what is my unit? It is volts. And that is the electromotive force. That is the standard cell potential. This little circle means that initially we've got one molar magnesium ion and one molar aluminum ion. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> so this reversing the sign of it, if we reverse it, that's very much like Hess's law. But what's unlike Hess's law here, well, there's a lot of things that are unlike it, but uh, it, this is not a mechanism one thing, um, is that we do not multiply the cell potentials or the half, half reaction, the reduction or oxidation potentials by this coefficient because the pull of the aluminum on the magnesium to take away magnesium's electrons. So the electromotive force that is pulling the magnesium's electrons away by the aluminum is completely independent of the number of electrons that travel. So this number is not dependent on the number of electrons that are moving. It is only dependent upon the pull that aluminum has for magnesium's electrons. Victory is ours. We're done.